Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this exciting symposium. My name is Thomas Gatkins, and I'm the director of the Getty Research Institute, multi-year collaboration between local and visiting scholars and the staff of the Getty Research Institute, who were drawn together by the mutual interest in the ways that surrealism was received and, in a certain way, and in a very characteristic way, reinvented throughout Latin America. The Getty Research Institute is interested to further scholarly cooperation and exchange with colleagues in Latin American countries. And this is, uh, hopefully, the first event representing this um, perspective. The Getty Reacher's Latin American Surrealist collections encompass various media, archives, journals, rare books, photographs, and artwork. They come from Chile, Peru, and Mexico, and include, most notably, the papers of Vicente Hidobro, Enrique Gomez Correa, Cesar Moro, Emilio Westphalen. You know that um, the, you remarked that the pronunciation of the last one was very German. <laughs> the journals um, that were edited by these influential figures, together with a large number of journals acquired separately, extend the sometimes local narratives of the archives into the international surrealist movement and offer an unprecedented opportunity for understanding the evolution of surrealism. We all could learn of one outstanding personality, Lucita Mulliken, whom I would like to honor especially and who is here in the audience. In 2009, we invited a group of scholars mostly from Latin American countries, to the Research Institute for a workshop in order to start a conversation about these collections and their place within larger discussions about surrealism. Later that same year, surrealism in Latin America became a GRI research project, one of over a dozen projects that make up our institutional research agenda. In the time since then, we have brought several of the workshop participants back to the, uh, to the Getty Research Institute to continue their research and to help us plan this symposium. We've also met new scholars who are working in different collections and asking different questions, but who share our interest in exploring surrealism from a Latin American perspective. They've become part of our conversation from a distance and are joining us in person today, and we welcome them very warmly. Thanks to colleagues within the Getty Research Institute, we are publishing articles from the original workshop in the Getty Research Journal and have digitized the important series journals VVV and DIN. This symposium is the next step for the Surrealism in Latin America Research Project, and I'm delighted to see that many of the original workshop participants were able to return to the GRI to be with us over the next two days. Following the symposium, organizers will propose a book, a book-length publication, as well as an exhibition. This symposium is the result of multiple collaborations both within and beyond the Getty. Rita Eda from the Universidad Nacional Autónoma de Mexico and Dawn Aids from the University of Essex were our active partners in organizing this event. We have to thank them very warmly for their engagement. Symposium organizers at the Getty include Donna Beckett, Donna Conwell, Annette Leddy, Roy Massineo, Rebecca Peabody, John Tain, Evelyn Sen, Kathy Davis, and Rebecca Samora. We have also been in conversation with organizers at Rice University in Houston, Texas, who are planning a conference 
on surrealism and the Americas in November of this year. You can find postcards um, uh, outside with more uh, details. Finally, as you may have noticed from the signs outside, the Getty Bookstore has stocked books by several of our symposium participants. All attendees will receive a 10% discount, it's not a lot, but it's um, something, <laughs> on, on, the, on these books as well as everything else in the store. That's better. Um, for, the duration, for the duration of the symposium. So be sure to visit the bookstore while you are here. But first, please join me in welcoming one of our key collaborators, Professor Rita Eda, to the podium. Rita, thank you very much um, for your enormous help um, in organizing this symposium. Good morning to all of you. Thank you for coming and being here. I'm going to speak a little bit about our title. In 1949, the Argentinian writer Julio Cortázar wrote a small piece, Un Cadáver Viviente, a living corpse, on the continuing vitality of surrealism continuously under attack and at some point pronounced dead. He referred to it as Bibissimo Muerto, which is almost untranslatable. But please accept something like a very much alive dead entity walking at your side and disguised as a specter. He was probably thinking of Paul Claudel and other enemies of André Breton, the French poet and writer and head of the Surrealist movement. The reasons for declaring war on Surrealism, especially in the late 1940s, are complex, and they hit hardest on the visual arts, because as painting, some of its most popular artists managed to vandalize the Surrealist image, converting it into a highly prized commodity while an important group of poets and writers in Latin America found in surrealism a continuing source of renewal. Perhaps Cortázar was also referring to his next big leap into the fantastic and freedom of imagination, extremely important in those years with Perón in power. Cortázar's case was representative of this discomfort or disgust with the populist regime and its cultural politics, a feeling shared under similar circumstances by other artists and writers in different Latin American countries. Vivissimo Muerto debates on Latin American surrealism, and going back to the question, you in the audience could ask or think the same way I tried to think whom Cortázar was maintaining a dialogue with, who, uh, who we are debating with. If I could answer concisely, I would say that debates are inherent to the history of art, particularly so in the field of modern and contemporary art. In the specific case of Latin America, at some point, there was there a tendency to define cultural and national specificities which do not really work. Surrealism, for some of its highly vocal opponents, contains, reinforce, contains and reinforces the stereotype of the exotic and the irrational, followed by a visual vocabulary characterized by a chaotic menu of realisms. From that perspective, a highly organized critical strategy proclaimed geometric abstraction and political conceptualism as the alternative Latin American tradition that would fit better or more successfully in the global world. I must say that the strategy has worked well, and at the same time, the tossing out of surrealism, sometimes symbiotically related to the fantastic, left out a very rich world of fascinating and unsolved problems. I know how much work is done on surrealism in Latin America here in the US and Europe. 
as you will be able to hear. I am also aware that the rift, although exists in the literary field, does not operate strongly at present, especially since the great success of the Chilean-Mexican writer Roberto Bolaño, who has brought the Vivísimo Muerto back in another guise. This is why we are here today, to encourage more research and stronger theoretical argumentation on the continuing questions of, for example, surrealism and ethnography, and how it changed the discussions of pre-Columbian archaeology and aesthetics in countries where encounters between the displaced exiles and the surviving traditional cultures took place, whether in Mexico, Peru, or British Columbia. I, for one, have always been a fierce opponent of close national art history, histories which is effective but does not work, and do think of the need and exhilarating experience of tracing relationships with other art forms, intellects, and theories, and certainly one of these richest episodes in this encounter between surrealism and the Americas. The vitality of any discipline or topic lies in the possibility of rethinking from the contemporary viewpoint, but also in the excavation of converging texts, objects, and theories that have been marginalized, denied, or are simply in a foreign language. Today we have the advantage of anthologies of texts, translation to which Don Addis has certainly contributed very much, and the October Journal is also to be mentioned. And we have today an immense bibliography that we can access through electronic means, but they cannot really yet substitute the Bass Library at the Getty and its special collections, images, and archives, letters, notes, and published material. It is here that this project began, began in a sort of casual way. No more than two years ago, Thomas Getkens told me about the Moro papers in the special collections and asked me if we could put together a research project around this particular object. I spent some time going through the correspondence between Moro and Emilio Westphalen, uh, the founder of the surrealist journal Las Moradas, and was interested not only in the correspondence between two Peruvian poets and writers, but was taken by the Latin American contributors to the journals. To the journal. In Moro's letters, I found reflections on love and war, exile and hardships, and points of view on his difficulties as an exile in Mexico, but also his enthusiastic letters on his acquaint getting acquainted with Alice Raon and Wolfgang Palin. There's also episodes on the organization of the 1940 International Exhibition in Mexico, which appeared at some point, and which reveal that he was subject to problems and censorships. I thought the paper suggested a number of possibility related to the themes we shall be dealing with today, from the encounter with the pre-Columbian to the surrealist legacy in our time. I want to thank Maria Clara Bernal, Terry Geis, and Graciela Esperanza for two days of obsessive discussion about the title for the symposium, until Graciela came up with a solution. I must say the Getty Research Institute made us very happy when you accepted our Vivísimo Muerto as an emblem for the conference. We would like to thank Thomas Getkins for his support, Rebecca Peabody, Donna Conwell, Annette Leddy, and John Ten for their involvement with the artistic and theoretical issues at stake, and also for being attentive to the big issues and the details. And we include so many more, so many more that have participated in the organization. And of course, we thank very much the audience for coming. Thank you.